Hey, good to see you again here in the shop. So today I want to talk about truing stands. I want to show you how to use truing stands because I've had a number of comments to my how to build wheels the easy way video where people have asked me how do you set up the truing stand? How do you use the truing stand? What are the correct ergonomics if you're going to sit there and build wheels all day? Well, I've done that job. Uh, I've been a professional wheel builder in a factory wheel shop and I've trued and built wheels on truing stands for a long time. So today what I want to do is talk about the basic functions of different truing stands, even though I have a lot of different truing stands here to show you because I've collected a lot over the years. They all work the same. They all do certain functions and they're easy to figure out once you understand how they work. And they're great fun to use. Uh, going into the office and building wheels all day is, is a dream job actually. So that's what's coming up today. One thing I want to make clear in this video is that it's not actually about truing wheels with a truing stand. I'm just going to show you how to use the truing stand, how to set it up, and what the four basic functions of the truing stand are, and how you do that. Now, if you want to learn about truing wheels, I have other videos about that, and uh, the one that's most popular and is easiest to follow, I think, is how to build wheels the easy way. And I cover truing side-to-side -side wobbles, truing roundness issues, and also tensioning wheels in that video. So check that out. But today what we're going to talk about is the truing stand and how to use it. Before you put a wheel in a truing stand, usually you take the tire off the wheel because it makes it easier to work on the highs and low spots in the rim because when the tire is not there, it's just easier to see the top of the rim. With the tire on, you can still true side to side wobbles easily, but side to side wobbles, even those are easier to see when the tire is not on the rim. The thing is though, that you might have tubeless tires that are full of sealant, and you might not want to take the tire off because you'd have to deal with the sealant. So in that case, you might leave the tire on the rim when you true it, and that's perfectly fine too. As long as the truing stand, the indicators on the truing stand the parts of the truing stand don't interfere, or the tire doesn't interfere with those parts, then you'll be okay. So most truing stands you can make it work with the tire on the rim. Now the other thing that you have to check whenever you work on wheels before you put them in a truing stand is you want to make sure that the axle that runs through the hub is straight, not bent, or crooked, or broken. And you want to make sure that on any hub with lock nuts and cones with bearings inside where there's actually an adjustment, that things aren't loose on there. Because if things are loose on the hub, it can change the spacing of the wheel and it can affect the trueness of the wheel and how easy it is to true the wheel, especially if there's play in the hub. If you pull and push on the axle and wiggle the axle and it moves all around in the hub, then it's going to affect it and make it harder to true the wheel. So the first thing is to check the axle, make sure it's straight, not bent. Make sure there's no play in there. If there's any loose parts, tighten them up and get the hub right before you put the wheel in the truing stand. That'll make the job much easier and prevent any frustration at the end when you find out that you went to the trouble to true the wheel but as soon as you adjust the hub the wheel is not centered anymore and you really wish you had checked before you got started. The wheels come in a lot of different sizes and they also come in with different types of axles so truing stands are set up to adjust to accept all these different types of wheels. So on this truing stand if you watch the uprights if I turn this knob right here See how the uprights, you could call these legs or uprights of the truing stand. See how they get closer or further apart. That's to accommodate the different width axles because today we have all kinds of different width axles and it's changed over the years. So they're very wide and they're very narrow too. So this has to change. Now on this truing stand, it's as simple as pushing it and pulling it. 
And sometimes the limitation of a truing stand is how wide it gets because if a truing stand was made in the 1960s, we didn't have wheels as wide as we have today in 2022. So the first thing, you look at the hub and you figure out what you have. So if you have an old style quick release hub, if you look close, you'll see that there's a little axle protruding here and there's a little axle protruding here. And if you get the spacing on the stand correct, the wheel just fits right in. The wheel is actually resting on the axle. You're not using the quick release to hold the wheel in there. If you wanted to, you could clamp the quick release and clamp the wheel in the truing stand, but it'll slow you down if you have to take it out and check anything off the truing stand. And it's usually not necessary. Usually the truing stand holds the wheel tightly just when you push it together or crank it together on this type stand. Uh, so you might want to take the quick release off the wheel, but you could leave it in if you're worried about losing parts or worried about taking it apart. Now that's how the quick release works. The other type you run into is a regular axle, an axle with a nut. This one doesn't have the nut, but that's how it's held onto the bicycle. This works just like the quick release in that it sits down and finds the V in the end of the truing stand. In the upright, there's a And you've got the wheel in the truing stand. Now, a lot of bikes today don't have standard axles anymore. They have what's called a through axle. And a through axle is hollow all the way through. And if you put this in here, there's nothing for the truing stand to hold on to. It's it, it just wants to slide through the uprights. Now, some truing stands, like this nice park truing stand, they actually have built-in through axle holders. So if I put this wheel in here like this, and I tighten this stand, the through axle adapters come in on the end of the uprights on the truing stand, the arms of the truing stand, or you keep calling them legs if you want to, and they hold the through axle just fine. And they'll hold whatever size. Through axles have different sizes and the truing stand will hold it. But if you don't have a truing stand that has these through axle adapters, you can buy through axle adapters. They look like this. They come in different sizes for the different size through axles. And all you do is press them into the through axle. And when they're in place in the through axle, you essentially have a normal axle on there. And now you can take your through axle wheel and you can put it in just as if it was like a wheel with a regular axle or a wheel with a, with a quick release. So it just goes in like that and it's being held by the through axle, the little axle on the end of the through axles. Those are the three setups that you run into and so if you're going to work on wheels with through axles, you probably want to get yourself some adapters or get yourself a truing stand um, that has these through axle adapters. Now, if you don't want to buy a selection of these through axle adapters and have them on hand, you can also buy these adapters for truing stands. These are made by Park Tool and they're basically through axle adapters for your truing stand, not for the wheel. So you could take this pair of adapters for a truing stand and you fit them on the truing stand like this and clamp them in place. And now, if you put your wheel in there, press the two uprights together, the wheel is held. by the through axle adapters. Now these will work better on a stand that you can tighten these. These are held by friction on this particular stand. The only thing that's holding these arms in this position is the friction inside the stand itself here. So in this stand, if you move it a lot, 
the wheel may fall out of there. So a through axle adapter, this type is going to work better with this particular stand. But on this type where you crank it in, it's threaded, actually threaded in place and held in place. These through axle adapters won't let the wheel slip at all. These would work on other stands, any stand that has arms that are held mechanically in position, these would work fine. I mentioned earlier that truing stands have four basic functions. So as I see it, the first function, the most simple function, something I probably don't even have to tell you, is that it's a wheel holder. So why would you want to hold the wheel? Well, if the truing stand is holding the wheel, if you want to put on a rim strip, it's a little easier because you can hold the wheel steady and you can pull the rim strip in. You could do that on the ground, but it's a little easier in a truing stand where you can look at what you're doing and pay attention and make sure you're getting this on straight and covering all the uh, nipple holes in the rim. Um, it's even more important if you're putting on tubeless tape to seal a rim to get the tape to stick flat, no bubbles underneath it so it's fully sealed. And in a truing stand, that makes that job easier. Another job you can do, if you use sew-up tires, also called tubular tires, they're glued on the rim. And for those, this is a great way to put the glue on the rim, get a nice even coat of glue on the rim, because you can turn it very carefully. The only thing there is, you want to be careful so the glue doesn't drip and mess up your nice truing stand. But as a wheel holder, it works great for that. The other thing it works great for is if you have a wheel where all the spokes are loose, like you just laced up a new wheel, or if you have an old wheel where the spokes have just loosened up, a truing stand is a great way if you want to go around the wheel, starting at the valve stem and tightening each spoke an even amount to gradually bring the wheel tighter all the way around, to tighten the tension of the spokes all around the wheel. And you do that the most when you build a brand new wheel because the spokes are all loose and you want to get them all to a somewhat low but even tension before you start truing the wheel. So those are the functions, the most basic function, the truing stand is a wheel holder. So now we'll get into the truing functions of the truing stand. And the second function of a truing stand, which is the first part of truing, is side to side truing, lateral. So you look for wobbles in the rim, and you try to get those wobbles out of the rim. Sometimes they call them warps uh, or wobbles, but they're side-to-side -side issues with the rim. And the truing stand has a feature of the indicator right here, which lets you gauge how much of a wobble you have. You can slide that in, and you sight the gap between the end of the indicator and the side of the rim. You can also listen to it when it runs around. If you get it set, you hear it rub, you know that that is too far to that side, and you also know it's coming this way, and you true until that noise stops. Using the indicator and looking at the gap and listening to the noise, you can gradually adjust spokes, loosening and tightening the right spokes until the wheel is straight side to side. This particular truing stand has another feature, it has a little notch here, and you can actually lower it and adjust that so that the notch is there. And the notch allows you to see issues with roundness along with side-to-side -side issues. You can see on this truing stand that you've got two indicators now, one on each side. See how they have plastic tips so they won't scratch a rim? And with two indicators, you can watch both sides. This moves up and down. Generally you run at the top of the rim, not lower on the rim. You're usually checking the braking track surface basically on a rim brake bike and on a disc brake bike you'd still be high on the rim, you wouldn't be down close, you'd be up on the flat 
surface on the top of the rim. Now if we look at this strewing stand, you can see that this has those same ind indicators or similar. We open and close them. Now they're fully rubbing. We loosen them up a little bit. We've got two indicators. Now, some people don't like to use two indicators. Some people will strap one so it stays away and they'll sight on one side only. It depends on what eye you prefer, how you look at things, how you work on wheels. So I've seen these strewing stands where they take off one arm and they don't even use it. Or you can just zip tie it or pull it out of the way so it's not there if you never use it. And it's fine to true with one side or the other. You don't have to true with either, with both at the same time if you don't want to. These are like the other truing stand, the first one, in that if you want to adjust it, so part of it is above and part of it is below, see the little notch in there? You can do that too. Which lets you, as the wheel gets truer and truer and truer and rounder and rounder and rounder, you can put it in this little notch to look at both roundness and wobble at the same time. So those are a couple different ways the indicators work. These are nice, they have little plastic tips on them. Those, the other one had plastic tips on them too. This has plastic tips that are removable if you want to take them off. They protect the rim, but sometimes you might feel that you can see better if you don't have the plastic tip on there. So the second function of the truing stand is side to side, removing side to side wobble. And that's how you do it with these indicators right here on the tips. The third function of a truing stand is for fixing wheel roundness issues. Typically, you'll turn your truing stand a little sideways and look across and, I mean, you can develop whatever style you want, you can use it the truing stand, however works best for you. One way a lot of people true wheels for roundness issues is to bring the truing stand pointers together so that they're below the rim. And then when you spin the rim, you sight the gap between the indicator and the bottom of the rim. And you can bring it up until it rubs. And you can see the gap and you can hear the rubbing. And the rubbing is a high spot where the rim is too high. And the where it's not rubbing is a low spot where the rim is low. So basically you have to loosen the low spot and tighten the high spot. When you tighten the high spot, you pull the wheel this way. When you loosen the low spot, you've tightened it this way and the low spot moves that way. And little by little, you get rid of any issues in roundness and make the wheel perfectly round. But you're just sighting a tiny little gap right there. And usually you look across, you, get the, you, you stand on one side, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, you look across the wheel and you try to sight the little gap and you take issues little by little, you get it rounder and rounder and rounder. Now this string stand works that way. But if we go back to this one, the way I would work on this is I would put the whole thing underneath the rim and I would adjust it up. Until it just hit the rim. And then I would true it. Until the high spot went away. Until it stopped rubbing. And then I would move it up again until it rubbed a little more. And I would keep going until it didn't rub anymore. And at that point, if you can barely see underneath it. And it's, and it's not rubbing anymore. Then you have a nice round wheel. Now if we look at the other truing stand, you'll notice that this one has a separate piece. See that little piece right there? It's 
So we can do the same thing with this where we set this so it just rubs. You remove that slight rub. Now this wheel has a pretty good wobble in it still, so it's hard to see it, but you'd get the wobble out first before you work on roundness. Usually that's the way to work. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can work on the roundness first if you want. But I like to work side to side and then I work on roundness and then usually you go back to side to side and then you work on roundness and gradually the wheel gets more and more perfect. So that's how you get the roundness on this truing stand. So that's how you use the truing stand indicators for side to side and this indicator or these indicators for roundness adjustments. Now for the fourth function of a truing stand, which is pretty cool, is you can check the centering of the wheel in a truing stand. So when you build a wheel, the rim needs to be centered over the axle in order for the wheel to center in the frame. So you always want to get a wheel, and you build the wheel, and when you work on wheels, you always want to end up with the rim properly centered. And one way to check with a truing stand, and remember this wheel is wobbly and needs work, so it's not going to be perfectly centered. If it was perfectly centered, we adjust one of these indicators so it touches the rim and we line it up somewhere on the rim like we'll do it on this sticker on the wheel and what we're going to do is we're going to flip the wheel around go back to that same spot on the wheel and we'll put it back in there and if this wheel was centered this rim right here it would have to be perfectly true and centered and if it was, this indicator would be the same distance from the rim on both sides. And if that's true, then you know that the rim is centered. And you can use your truing stand that way to get the wheel perfectly centered. Now there are tools for this called dishing tools. And they're special tools. And they help you do that. You have to take the wheel out of the truing stand to check it, usually, with most truing stands. But this is a nice feature of a truing stand that you can use it for where you don't have to use a separate dishing gauge. So that's another feature of a truing stand that makes it a nice tool to have. Real quick, I wanted to show you that there are also truing stands that can be set up with or that come with dial indicators. So this is another setup you can get. These cost more. They're usually found on truing stands that are more expensive too. There's different types of dial indicators like this vintage press array truing stand from Belgium that has the needles but doesn't have any dials. This works different than the dial indicators work. So the best advice I can give you is to read the directions on your dial indicators so you know what you're looking at when you see the needles moving around. When I was showing this stand I bet some of you were thinking I could make my own stand just like that. And you probably could make it if you have some steel, some handy steel like angle iron is good to work with or if you had some good plywood and the tools to work with these materials it wouldn't be hard to build a stand like this. If you look at the stand it's pretty simple construction. It has a sliding piece over here that's so that you can adjust it for different width wheels, different size hubs and then it's got the slider here for different diameter wheels and this is your indicator that comes in to touch the rim and check for wobbles and check for roundness issues. So with some nuts and some bolts and some steel or some wood, you could put one of these together and be a satisfying little project. It could save you a little money too. So let's talk a little bit about the ergonomics of building wheels or working on wheels, truing wheels with a truing stand. You know, it sort of becomes your workstation for a while. It can take a while to fix a wheel. So you want to have it set upright so you don't have a sore back and a sore neck and especially so you can see what you're doing. So I like to have a workbench that's comfortable for how tall I am. People who are different heights use different sized workbenches so you've got to figure that out. And I like to have a, some kind of a stool to sit on because sometimes to see what you're looking at on a wheel 
It helps to sit down. I work standing and sitting. I change positions when I'm working. My preference is a heavy stand. I like a stand that stays put and doesn't move around. And I like a stand, uh, park stands have a nice base on them that adapts even if the table is a little warped or not perfectly flat. This piece of plastic can flex and move a little bit and it can stay flat on the surface. The thing about having a stand that's heavy but not too heavy is that you can move it a little bit and adjust it to get your line of sight right. So if you're sitting on your, your stool, your workbench stool, and you need to look across when you're fixing the up and down on the wheel, you can see through there sitting down better than you can standing up and down. But when you're watching for side to side wobbles, it's easier to stand up and look down. Now, If you look at the park truing stands, they come with a white surface here and a white surface here. My old one has the same thing, a white panel here. And that's to give you a white background to see the wobble better. And that's a nice feature on these truing stands. Uh, my best workstation that I ever had had white walls, a white workbench top, and it had a skylight. So light was coming in from above, illuminating the whole work area. You could see the wobbles so easily and made it really better at the end of a day of building wheels because you had good light all day and you could see. If you don't have a white room like that, but you wanted to create something like that, you could get yourself some poster board and you could put the poster board up to turn a tool wall into a white background. And you could take it a step further and put up a side wall. And if you sat on the right, you'd, you'd have white everywhere you looked. You could even put it underneath the truing stand to have white. Another way to do it on this truing stand, I just took a little poster board and I created a little white background so whether I was looking from this way or from that way, I would have white to look at underneath the indicators on the truing stand. So these white backgrounds are very helpful. If you find yourself getting tired trying to true a wheel, get a piece of white paper behind it. It's very similar to looking at a disc brake and trying to center a disc brake. If you have, if you have white on the floor, you can see the gaps better and it really helps on the truing stand. Now, if you have one of these truing stands, not as heavy as that truing stand, and this truing stand, which is an affordable, pretty budget stand compared to these others, this is a really lightweight stand. These types of stands, when you're working on wheels, they tend to move around. And when they move around, the wheel moves around, which makes it hard to see the wobbles and make fine adjustments on the wheel. So with this type of a stand, you actually might want to attach a base to it, make your own base. This stand here is actually a park stand that my friend made the base for. And this is a very heavy base. It weighs about 30 pounds, but it has a beautiful made a beautiful birch wood, has a drawer in the middle, and I use this for a long time. It's been a great truing stand, and the weight of it makes the wheels very stable in there when you're working on them. With this stand, you might want to make your own base. If you didn't want to make your own base, you could bolt it in place on the bench. The only problem with working ergonomics with it bolted to a bench is then you're going to want to make sure the bench is the right height and you're probably going to sit and stand when you're working at it because you can't move the truing stand around once it's bolted to the bench. Uh, but you can work around it just by moving your body. Um, you can, can be a little more tiring at the end of the day because you're basically doing calisthenics to true the wheel. But that's what I would do. I would either clamp it with a C-clamp if you have a bench that will accept it, or you could build your own base, or you could bolt it. Some of these stands come with holes in them and that's so that you can bolt it to the bench. Some stands you can put in a vise and hold them that way. But my favorite thing, and you might want to give it a try, is to get a stand that has a nice base. Now those tips I think will help you if you end up building and truing a lot of wheels and 
keep it enjoyable and not too tiring and let you do a better job because you're more comfortable and you can see better and see what you're doing and get that wheel really true and round and straight. I hope today's tips help you with your wheel building and your wheel repairs and getting the most out of your truing stand. They're really great tools, but there's a lot of different types and I didn't cover all of them in this video because I don't own every truing stand out there. So you might have a truing stand with some different features and if you do and you're not sure how to use that feature, I didn't cover it in this video, please leave a comment. I'll look at your truing stand, find it online and take a look at it and answer the questions that you have. They're usually pretty easy to figure out but some can be a little confusing and I'm happy to help with that. I've trued with a lot of stands that I don't have and I couldn't cover in this video. Now if you've got a truing stand and you build wheels and fix wheels with it and you've got some tips to share, it'd be great to hear them and it would help other wheel builders and wheel fixers and bicycle mechanics if you shared them in a comment. I appreciate it a lot. If you have a favorite truing stand, you can list that too because that would help somebody in the market for a truing stand. If you're interested in what I use for a truing stand, it's this new Park Truing Stand, the 4.2. I just recently got this and I did a video on it. So I'll post a link to the video to this stand so you can learn all about it at the end of this video. I'll also have a link at the end of this video to my How to Build Wheels the Easy Way. That's a very popular video and I'll link to that at the end of the video too. So thanks for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Mm -hmm.